about three pumps are broke. That the rain has stopped for now doesn't help when the water's already inside your home. I wasn't expecting it. Quite often they say that we're going to flood and then I woke up this morning to this, it was a bit of a shock. For my sister-in-law now, you've got to try and get the water out, get a house dry and livable again. Well, it's just not nice, is it? It's not a nice feeling. So all what you've worked for could just be washed away. So it's not nice. It was the early hours of this morning when this street filled with water and then that water forced its way inside people's homes and, you know, just look, the sandbags that people have got in their doorways done very little to keep the water out. In places, it's up to your thighs. This area flooded back in 2007, so people here, they know what's in store, and that is months of things being very difficult as they try to get their homes dry and put everything back in order. Some people left last night, Others stayed, not wanting to leave behind pets. But then this morning, with the water in, needed to move. It's been the same for many others in many parts of England this week. It's estimated more than a 1,000 properties have been flooded. In Nottinghamshire, where a major incident was declared earlier this week, the River Trent is still so full, warnings remain in place. Weather events once said to be exceptional, according to Nick Green from the Environment Agency, do seem to be happening much more often. I can honestly say I'm into double digits, the amount of big floods that we've had. Um, climate change, I don't know, but I think in terms of a, a nation, as a, in terms of a community, we need to get a grasp of what could, we could be facing in the future. Um, and is simply building big walls good enough to keep communities safe and protected going forward into the future. There are questions too about the here and now, with calls from some for the Prime Minister to go to the worst affected places. Why didn't you visit them yesterday when you were so close by? Well, actually, I spoke to people in the East Midlands yesterday who had been affected and talking to them about how devastating the impact of flooding is. I just want people to be reassured that the Environment Agency has got people on the ground in all the affected areas. Also, more than uh, more hundreds of, of high-volume pumps are in practice right now making a difference. Come down here and take a look. Take An invitation a from Lorraine in Longford direct to the Prime Minister today. This area has flooded before, but for years, not like this. And never as fast, she told me, as it happened this week. Take a look at what's been building, of why they keep building on floodplains. Floodplains are there for a reason. They're there to take water. But all they've done is they built, 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 built. This is why we're in this situation now. So it'd be lovely to actually get the government down here to come and have a little look. After so much rain and storm after storm, the river levels will stay high. The risk of flooding will remain for the next few days. Putting homes and lives back in order will take much longer. Well, even though a lot of work is being done to try and move the water that's affecting areas like this one, here, over the last few hours, the water level doesn't actually seem to have dropped a great deal of toll and this isn't a small area that's affected this flood water stretches for as far as i can see and i don't know if you can see those lights on a van down there that's one of the frustrations of people here that people do drive down it even though the road is closed and that sends waves through people's homes who've got water in them one of the things lorraine who you heard from in my report the woman who wanted the prime minister to come here said to me was that when the water came it actually came up it came up from the drains, and that means there's sewage in this water. Even once this water has gone, people here have months of really difficult times ahead of them. Thanks, Claire. Well, earlier I spoke to Alex MacDonald, an Environment Agency flood risk advisor for the East Midlands, and I asked her why that region has also been so badly affected. So we've seen an extremely wet winter. Um, we had 
very big impact from Storm Babette in October with record breaking river levels in, in Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. And since then, the catchments have been extremely wet. So when we had the rainfall over the past few days, there's been nowhere for that water to go. And again, it's broken river levels in the Leicestershire area. And we're seeing that impact through Nottinghamshire at the moment. Now, are, are these sorts of events becoming more common? It does seem that way, yes. We are, we are seeming like we're feeling the impacts of climate change in the East Midlands. Every winter, it seems like we're having a series of storms and we're having prophecies flooded. Storm Babette in October was extremely impactful with thousands of properties in the East Midlands. And we're having numbers in the hundreds at the moment and still collating them from Storm Hank. So what, what would it take just in the East Midlands to stop these sorts of... Um, weather patterns from, from flooding so many homes? So we do have a programme of investment um, in the East Midlands, working with partners and the local authorities. However, we're seeing really high river levels um, and we can't just keep building walls and defences ever higher. So when we're working with partners and communities, we're looking at what other measures we can do. So trying to make communities more resilient through things like property flood resilience. What, what is property flood resilience? So property flood resilience is ways that you can, or things that you can do to your property, such as installing flood doors, changing your air bricks so that they close when flood water touches your property, through to things like raising your electric, waterproof, plasterboard. I mean, you know, you, you said we couldn't just keep building flood defences. Um, and I guess a lot of people will say, well, why not? Yeah, I think when we're looking at the river levels and the, the climate change projections, the walls would need to be really, really high in some locations. And those are in idyllic villages like we've got in the Peak District. And they're the places that people want to go to in the summer when the water's low to enjoy that environment. And building defences through those types of uh, places will completely change the look and feel of the character of those areas. There was a National Audit Office report at the end of last year which said that the Environment Agency had underspent on flood defences. What kind of impact does that have on protecting homes? We really feel for people and we'd love to move faster. When we're looking at um, a capital scheme and building flood defences, it costs millions of pounds and we do have to look at the economics of the situation and, and deal with the, the calculations and the business case rules that we've got set. You're saying in some ways you don't want to build more flood defences, you want to make homes more resilient, but on the other hand you're saying, well, the, the economics are challenging as well. So do you need more money to spend on flood defences or not? We need to look at how we can do things differently. So we're looking at significant investment into things like natural flood management. Um, so working in those upper catchments, trying to stop water at its source and slow the flow and rate of that into the water courses. And it's a whole range of different things that we need to pull together to help to make communities more resilient. OK, Alex McDonald, thank you very much. Thank you.